Areena. I think it's time we thought out of the box here, Zena. What about an audience vote on what we cover in the pod? No, we can't let other people tell us to do things we don't want to. I think I agree, but you know some political parties say they actually do want to do that. They do. Some want to one-click democracy. I'm not sure how it's working for them, but I know whom to ask. Hello and welcome to All Points North, the podcast that usually consults the audience. I'm Egan Richardson, and as ever, Zena Ivino is joining me on the show today. Welcome, Zena. It's great to be here, Egan. Now, this week we have more local election coverage, and as ever, is really exciting. All election coverage is exciting, as we know, but this week we have a new arrival on the Finnish political scene. Yalis Hargimo's Movement Now group was founded a few years ago when he left the National Coalition Party and then became his own political party. Which not everyone was happy about, we must admit. The initial brand was as an upstart anti-politics movement, but then Hargimo backtracked and registered as the bureaucratic requirements of the Finnish system started to assert themselves. That is, the group gets more funding once it's a political party than a movement of independence. Movement now has its sights on becoming a digital democracy where members can vote on issues online to influence their representatives' positions, at least in theory. Yes, that covers it, I think. But we started off asking Yalis about how he got started in politics and what went right and wrong. With us today is Yalis Harkimo, leader of Movement Now. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, now, we'd love to meet you in person and do this properly, but the pandemic is what it is, and we need to keep our distance for now. Um, how have you found working from home a bit more during the pandemic? I don't think it's a problem, uh, because uh, from the, uh, in the government we can't walk, work uh, we have to be there every day at the sessions almost. So, so we have some meetings that are uh, are not are not like in place. And uh, but most of the time we have to go to the parliament house and and be there. We have sessions every day almost. April's almost here and it's almost summer. So, what are you looking forward to doing after this long pandemic affected winter and spring? As a former champion sailor, are you looking forward to getting out on the water? Yeah, of course. I'm looking. Uh, I'm more looking out, looking forward to get rid of the pandemic, pandemic, so we can live a normal life and and uh, and do things with the kids and uh, and and in the countryside. But but the the pandemic doesn't change me so much or, or my life style of living because I have a cottage here. I live in Helsinki, but I have a cottage in in Sipo and, and uh, here it's the same if it's pandemic or not. I can fish here and I, I can I can uh, walk outside and I can ski. And so it, it's normal life here. It's only when you go to the town, it's 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 different. But but here it's the same. Yeah, there's um, large parts of the countryside have been mostly untouched, really. But um, for for our listeners who don't know, uh, you have had many different careers uh, in sports, as we mentioned, in business and in television. Um, so you've been successful in show business and politics. Is show business a good uh, preparation for politics? Does it give you a lot of skills that you need in in the political arena? Yeah, the things that I was doing, I was doing talk shows, and, and then I've had two former wives that has been in the parliament. So I've been involved with politics like for ten, tens of years and uh, and I've been interviewing politicians and then you have to really dig in deep and know what they think about and you have to know the facts. And and uh, so it, it, it helps a lot, a lot, lot that you have been doing, doing TV shows and, and meeting different kind of people and you know about business and you know about life and you know about politics. So I don't see it as a problem. It's a benefit to be in different 
areas before you go to politics. I, I, I think it gives you something. I don't believe in, in being in politics the whole of your life. Uh, I don't believe in that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and one of your biggest roles was um, presenting The Apprentice. And uh, I have to ask, you're not the only former Apprentice host to go into politics. Do you identify with the former US President Donald Trump? Only, only, an, only an apprentice, but, but uh, I've been I've been watching him a lot, and and I've been studying his his behavior, and I've been studying his 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 way to 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 get things in the air, and uh, but but I I don't I don't I don't of course like his things that he's doing about what he's saying, but the 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 way he has been doing this thing i've been studying that a lot but i don't see any any uh we're quite different people and the only 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 thing we have in common is the apprentice now movement now was founded in 2018 when you left the national coalition party initially you said you would never be a political party at first you attracted some local groups to join movement now in heinola and yamsa but yeah. when registered as a party, they left saying they wanted to remain unaligned and not yeah. get involved with the political games that parties tend to engage in. Yeah. Are you still a fresh and new anti-system alternative or have you become a mainstream political actor by now? No, we are not the mainstream political actor and this too has left but we have grounded, we have uh, 35 new places that we are on after that and and uh we are a fresh uh, accord. We have made a search, and and uh, uh, people think that we are a new fresh party, and we are because we want to have people involved. We have a new app, and we have a a, 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 a net parliament, and and we like our political things that we do. We we have people involved in saying there. We want people to be more involved, uh, all not only in the elections on the periods between the elections we want people to say there and and when we make big decisions we want people to be involved and we want them to vote for the things so we know what people think so it's a it's a totally new thing it's 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 a little bit like the five star movement in in italy which i've studied a lot they have different things that they want to have uh, in we don't have in common the politi poli political things but we have in common the things where, how we ask the people what they think now, at the same time, you seem to have a fairly comprehensive set of principles that candidates need to, to sign up for to, to join movement now. So is it really practical to say you're allowing in individuals this sort of freedom in an election system like Finland? Uh, the, most, the, the most important thing for the people to sign up for us is that they have to uh, work with the principles that they have to listen to people. We don't have many other principles that they 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 have to do. Of course, of course, we can't take anybody there if if they are like if they have have different kind of things that racism or things like that. Then we can take them in. But otherwise, we want to have people, and we want to have more people that are not involved with politics but have different skills that they can, that we the whole party can benefit from. Can I just um, come in there on the move, uh, the five star movement um, things? You said you'd studied them. Now they they've had a, a big rise. They they've gone into government and they they've been very successful. But then they've also faded away a little bit. They're losing support now. Some people say that's because they don't have that ideological coherence. That they're not united around core beliefs. Do you would you share that analysis or what do you think they've done wrong? No, I don't. I don't know, but uh, they haven't. They are still a big party in Italy. I think they have something fifteen or sixteen percent, and they had over twenty when they when they were the biggest party there in the last election. So they are still, and there hasn't been any elections after that. So they are the biggest party there. Uh, it, it's how how you how it's how you take care of these people that are in your party that uh, that has to do how long you can can do the things. And I think that this uh, idealistic thing and, and these things, they are old fashioned and you should think about the things that are best for Finland and, and not what are best for your party or, or your supporters. 
uh, like the, the Socialist Party and the right-wing parties do. They just do the politics to their own supporters, and I think you should do the politics for Finland. And when you don't have any sort of a, a, a broad ideology, uh, ideology then, then, then it's easier to work. And we don't have any, any, anybody that we have to, nobody can say what we have to do. So, so I, I think it, the parties will change in the future. And, and for example, social democrats, they were built when they were worker and they were, were uh, factory owners. And I, I think it's old fashioned. I, I think it will change in the future. Well, isn't that just because you're new, you don't yet have that, that party infrastructure? So you, you clearly now you can do what you like, but in five, ten years' time, you'll have people that have been part of the party and expect certain things. Yeah, but we will never have that infrastructure that all these other old parties have. We don't need that because you have a, the internet and you have, a, you have the social media, so you can work with that you don't need need that kind of inf- infrastructure that these big parties are building but but of course they have a lot of money and so they can employ almost everybody because the system that we work in Finland it's you get the money how many representatives you have in, in the parliament you recently authored a piece saying that Finland has taken on an alarming amount of debt and that the government needs to make cuts but you don't really specify how you want to decrease spending You've just said you want to lower corporate taxes. So no, what's we your haven't, plan? We haven't told that we have to do cuts now. Of course, we have to see that the economical things, but we have to get rid of the unemployment and and uh, we have to get rid of, rid of uh, the structures that we have in the country with the with the ESACO and ECO and, and these kind of things that are old-fashioned and, and deciding we have to get... Uh, uh, people that they can decide about their wages and they can say uh, time work, working time uh, in the companies. We, we have to re- get rid of a lot of things uh, to get this economic system running. And, and uh, we have a lot of things that we, we want to do, but, but, uh, but, and the taxes is only, the corporate taxes is only if you invest, we want that to be lowered. So we get investments in Finland because the problem we have in Finland, we have too little investments today, and we need more investments. And when you get investments, you the, the companies employ people too. So there's a lot of things we want to do and and uh, and change the, the structure of, of the whole system in the country. So you brought up employee confederations there. Are you saying you want to dismantle some of the worker protections afforded by Finland's collective bargaining system? No, I'm not going to want to do that. But I want I, I want the, the companies to be able to 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 negotiate the the wages and 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 the and the and and the working time in the companies. We can have a minimum minimum wage. I, I, I'm not against that. But but we have to get that system more more working and and easier for the companies to work. Because I have had ten companies and I know how difficult it is. There's a lot of things that you have to change if you want to employ more people. And where would you set Finland's minimum wage then? Uh, I haven't, I can't tell. Uh, that's that's how it's now. It's pretty good, the system we have now for the minimum wage. But you know, I, I don't think that's, a, that, that's not a problem. Now, earlier you brought up how political parties in Finland receive their funding. It's based on their representatives. So yeah. out of all of Finland's political parties, uh, movement now received the smallest amount of state support of all the parties this year. So you yeah. got about 180,000 euros. Yeah. Does that cover all of your expenses? No, it doesn't cover. I'm covering the rest of the expenses. And then we get some support from the companies, but... But I put in uh, like seven hundred thousand euros in the in the part. Really, that's a lot of money. Well, for me, it's a lot of money. Maybe not for you. I don't know. It's, it's for me too. <laughs> but when I get into something, I really want to do it, and 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 I want to get this running, and that's why I'm 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 putting in the money. And you said some some from companies. What what kind of proportion would that be? Uh, that's like a couple of percent, maybe ten percent of the whole amount we get. Right. And what are the companies expecting in return then for their donations? I haven't asked them. 
You've you've said you want to sell off some of Helsinki's municipally owned companies and cut tax rates. Um, couldn't that be seen as short term thinking using one off income to replace ongoing revenue? No, I haven't talked about anything else than Helen, the energy company that is is now. Uh, uh, I want to sell off 30% of it and I want to make it a stock company so we can get professional people running the company. Now it's politicians who run it and I want to broaden the scale of the company so they can export to Sweden and Estonia and things like that. I think that value b- will be much bigger for the company if it's professionally run. And uh, I think the money we get, it's the 25 years of, of revenues we can get now and, and we can put that money into into other things and I think the value of the company will go up so I don't think we would lose so much but we will get a lot of money to work with uh, things that we need in Helsinki. So you're a fairly unique Finnish politician of your generation in the sense that you have your own YouTube channel. Um, what have you learned about new media and younger audiences from YouTube? And that was that was one of the reasons why I went to YouTube. I said to my boys that guys, I'm going to YouTube. They said that you're crazy. You're too old for that. You can't go there. You you annoy us. But uh, then I went into there in there and uh, and I'm trying to uh, tell the young people about business, about politics, and about different things, so they can learn something from my uh, my YouTube channel and and. Without the social media, this movement now would never be anymore. If if I wouldn't have so broad scale of of uh, of, of uh, followers, in I have in Instagram, I have thirty thousand, and in 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 Facebook, I I have forty five thousand followers, and in Twitter, I have hundred and sixty thousand, and and in YouTube, I have. Uh, 85,000 that uh, want to have my YouTube every week. So this gives me a chance to tell the views that I have and and, and uh, get my thinking to the people. Okay. Um, so it sounds uh, very, um, very successful. Um, there has been criticism of some politicians, though, for the product placement and the advertising that they do on social media. Um, and I think you, you and your son, Joel, who's also a counsellor, mm. have advertised different things on social media, even given financial advice. What would you say to people who think it's um, inappropriate for elected officials to do that kind of thing? Uh, I haven't got any money from social media, but Joel is doing. I think there's a lot of social media workers that does their work and and uh, and uh, which is their profession to be social media people. And they get they get their salaries from there. I think that's there's nothing wrong about that. Of course, then when you are in the parliament, it's different. But when you sit in the government in the, or in the municipality government, so things like that, then you can do it. But you just have to tell what you are doing and how much money you get from it. I I I don't see it as a problem. But then when you are elected to the parliament, I, I think you have to stop with that. Okay, so. But I mean, is, local councils also make big decisions. Why, why is there that? Why would there be that that boundary between parliament and and local councillors? Because it's, it's their interest. It's, the, it's their them. work. It's their work, and they can't live without their work. And and you can't. Uh, they they can't do do like advertising in in things that are are involved in this this municipality when they get stuff there so they can't do comp- competing things of course but but they have to be really caref- careful of what they do of course that, that that's a problem okay um so you've said that you think that maybe San Namarin gets preferential media treatment um do you still think that yes i'm 100 uh, of course she, she gets your company is one of the ones who gets but uh, do you think that is? I mean, it's harder for you as a an older man to get your point across in the media. Is that is that one of the things that's driving that? No, it's not. Uh, it's because we are a small party. We have difficulties to get our things in the media, of course. But if we were a bigger party, we would have easier. And and when we grow, we will get our. I'm not. Uh, that's not a problem. I think. 
it's it's how you do the media. Helsingin Sanomat and YLE has been very positive to this prime minister. If you look at the last prime minister, what kind of media coverage he got. So it's a total different ball game. The that's I guess in the eye of the beholder. Um but you you're talking I'm about, talking about my opinion now. Okay, yes, yes. Um that's your opinion. Um but you said that our employer Ula's costs should be cut by ten percent um because audiences wouldn't notice the reduction in services. But you also have lots of commercial media interests yourself, as we've we've discussed. Are you not just trying to weaken a competitor? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to be to the competitor. And ten percent of the budget is very little, and you can, by efficiency, you can get the same programs out. Uh, I don't think that's a problem. And I'm not trying to be to the competitor. I'm not an owner of any media other than my own media. Okay, well, you are um, in the media world, shall we say. And it, many of the criticisms of Ulla are either that Ulla is too popular, that they make things that compete with commercial media, or it's not popular enough that it's spending public money on things that are not interesting to anybody. Yeah, so but I, I was, for example, I, I was not against this new thing that they did for the text TV. I was not against I think that. We could have been doing that in the future too, and and uh, and uh, so I'm not against Ule, but, but I, I just think that they could cut 10% uh, by efficiency and do things better. But I think they could anyway do the same programs, and it will, would not weaken Ule. Okay, it's always a question of which 10%. But anyway, um, let's move on from. from <laughs> so you I understand your view too. <laughs> <laughs> So you've been a critic of Finland's uh, move to reform health and social services. Now, as yeah. a reminder for our audience, this reform package called SOTE has been in the pipeline for years and transfers the responsibility of social and healthcare provision from municipalities to 21 regional authorities plus the city of Helsinki. Mm -hmm. uh, you say the reform will be expensive and that the taxpayer will foot the bill. So what's your proposal instead? I think it should be in the 13 uh, districts with with the with the hospitals and and uh, we don't need any anything else. We just have to be take care of that the people get treatment treatment in the first grade. I mean in in Tervelskeskus grade. I, uh, that's our problem now. We don't need this whole system to change the health system and. I, I I think it we could do it with smaller. Now we get new elections and we get a new new people that have to work with it and and uh, like it's been said in the government it will not save any money which would be the purpose in the <clears throat> in the beginning of SOTE so uh, I think uh, there's a lot of things that I would look different in SOTE. Okay but government after government has tried to get this reform over the finish line and finally we have one that's done it and now you're complaining. They have not so, done it so people want to know how you do it better. Yeah, but they haven't done it yet. It's it's far from done it now. It has. It, there's a lot of things that are not ready with that, and and I don't think, for example, it's right <clears throat> to take so much money from the big towns and and uh, and uh, because then they can take care of their growings and and uh, and things like that. There's a lot of difficulties in this new sort of system. And uh, most of, of of the private sector is is taking out from the from this sort of system, which I think they should compete with with be able to compete with the whole system. So I, I think there's a lot of things that are. I think the last one that they tried to do was much better than this one. But uh, you've criticized the some of the restrictions for being too hard on bars and restaurants compared to retailers, for instance. Um, but what a lot of people want to know is what would you do in this situation? I think Finland has handled the COVID system pretty well. And I haven't criticized. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's really okay to close the restaurants. I criticized this the last week that they opened the restaurants in some places and closed them in some places, which I think wasn't right. But uh, uh, in other hand, I think the COVID system has been 
done uh, we have done well in in the whole system and I, I haven't criticized the government so much small things that the borders could be closed earlier and and things like that w would have helped but I think the government has done pretty well with the COVID system and and we are pretty good in that that case and I think it's right to close the restaurants but I've been arguing about the things that are is it la right last week them on Monday to close Coopio and open Lapland because they have a different system that's why I, what I have criticized Okay. Um, what would you do about the vaccinations? Would you focus vaccines on certain areas where the epidemic is worst? Yeah, if they, we get extra vaccines, we we could take them to to these uh, to the bigger towns. I think it's okay. Oh, but not with the current supply. With the current supply, uh, it takes so big. long before before you can change the whole system. So I don't know if you can. If if it helps anymore, but but the 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 vaccines that come into Finland now, uh, I think they could be distributed. But of course we have to take care of the whole country, and and we can see the people that have done well in the COVID system that they don't have much COVID there, and they have been working with that. We can leave them alone, so they should get the vaccine too. But of course you can do some some uh, like. Uh, in Helsinki, we need more in Turku and, and different places you can do it. Okay. Um, you've criticized the EU's COVID bailout fund. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the EU should do instead? I, I have not criticized. The, <clears throat> I think that for Finland, it's bad. It's bad negotiated and and it's not favorable for Finland. And the whole... whole uh, we get 2 million euros from that and we have to pay 6.6 .6 and with the taxes and interests or the interest rates, it will be 8 to 9 million and we get 2 million. And, and, and then if you look at Italy and they get, for example, 50, 60 million and they can do it for the same purpose that we do it, it, it it's, it's not right done, I think. And, uh, and our portion is not big enough. And, I wouldn't, uh, if it goes to voting in, in 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 the parliament, I would be against it because I don't think it's favorable for Finland. I will negotiate it again. Well, isn't that is that realistic now that you, as I mean, as one MP in the Finnish parliament, you're going to say to 26 other countries, okay, sorry, we need to cancel this, go back, uh, renegotiate uh, it. I have to say my own view, even if I'm alone, and there's a lot of other parliament people. And if it goes to two thirds of uh, of of the uh, that two thirds have to vote, then we need some of the opposition's party to vote for the for for the EU package. And 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 Kokomos has criticized the package a lot, so we have to see what they vote. Okay, but then when it goes back, Finland gets an extra what half a billion or something. Then you'd vote for it. No, half a billion. The whole system. No, I don't think we we have we we give guarantees two point eight million every year to to this package and to EU. So that could, if if something goes wrong in EU, we have to pay a lot of money. It's not only only the package that is wrong. Our responsibilities is far too big compared to what we get and and uh, our economy is not in the shape today that we could we could uh, <clears throat> that that we are in that position that that our benefit is so much smaller than what we pay but isn't this just a refusal to take responsibility when you look at the country comparison with the USA where no the, I'm taking responsibility and I, if I would negotiate it I think we will get a better result in that I, I don't think it's why would it be going away from the responsibility? There's a lot of people that that doesn't think that the EU package is fair for Finland. I'm not the only one. And the Finnish people doesn't think it's fair for Finland. No, and we've asked other, other politicians about this too, but if you compare the EU's bailout package at $750 billion to the American um, stimulus passed by Joe Biden, or expected to be passed by Joe Biden, at $1.9 billion, uh, or is it 1.9 trillion um, mm. uh, dollars? Uh, there's a big gap there. Is, I mean, it, it, isn't it time for Europe to come together and actually work to support those that are, that are not doing so well? 
and that that is just the price for Finland's membership. Yeah, and that, I think we are doing that because it's a ticket for the membership. But we, our economy is not in the shape. We would need much more money to get our economy in good shape. So I, I don't, I don't see why we have to help everybody else that doesn't get, take care of their economy as good as we do. You might end up fighting with the Five Star Movement there. So we should jump in here and explain what comes next. Harkimo used to own the Jokerit Ice Hockey Club before he sold a stake to Russian investors and took the club to the Russian-dominated KHL League. The league is pretty closely linked to Russian business and government interests, and that's become more and more controversial over the last few years. Pialis says it wasn't a problem when he made the leap, as you will hear, but criticism has grown louder since then. And the main issue here, of course, is that his business partners were so close to the Russian elite that they ended up sanctioned by the U.S. government. Over the years, you've taken a lot of heat for your connections to Russian oligarchs related to your ownership in Finnish pro hockey team Jokerit. You didn't sell your stake in the club until 2019, so for four years you were a parliamentarian and in business with people who were under U.S. sanctions. Why didn't you cut ties sooner? I couldn't. It was difficult to get it sold. Otherwise, I would have done it. But... Uh, for, for first of all, I had nothing to do with these people. I met them once a year, but but we took care of our own budget. And and, and uh, first I sold the building, and then I sold the Okerit, and I don't see it as a problem. But at the same time that you had this ownership and you were an MP, you served on four different parliamentary committees, arguably giving you access to sensitive state information while you're doing business with people in Vladimir Putin's inner circle, is that not a conflict? No, it's not a conflict. In the, uh, we are talking about sports now, and uh, and I had nothing. I, I didn't meet those people, and I never never negotiated. I, I met them once a year to to take care of the budget. That was the only thing. I, I had nothing to do with these people. Okay, can I can I just ask? Do you do you still think it was the right decision to? take your credit into the KHL in the first yes. place? Because it has okay. been seen as a kind of a PR. Yeah, it, it, yeah, but when I took it into the into the uh, KHL, there was no political problems at that time. I could, How could I know that they're going to Krim and Ukraine and they were doing these kind of things in the future? At that time, I, I, I thought it was the right thing. Now you can, could argue that is it the right thing. But it was always very closely linked to political figures in Russia. Yeah, but it uh, there was nobody criticized it when I could get got in there. Now they criticize it because a lot of th- things that Russia has done. But at that time, nobody criticized me about that. Now it's easier to say afterwards. So we've we've heard you mention Italy's five star movement a few times. Uh, when you were putting your party together, you actually flew in a key figure from the Five Star Movement to help help you brainstorm. Now, that Italian party belongs to a club of anti-establishment parties in the West that also sympathize with the Kremlin. Why would you seek advice from a party that's especially sympathetic to Russia? I, don't, I have nothing to do with their politics, and I didn't even ask about their politics. I just, we were just talking about the platform and 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 the internet systems that that uh, they did, and and we want to talk. We would like to. We would wanted to talk about how they have built it and and uh, and the platform and how they have do the computer systems and things like that. We have nothing to do with their politics. That's the same that you say that I'm doing the apprentice. Uh, am I doing the same politics than Trump? No, I'm not. But the five star movement, we just uh, talked about these things. And, and when he came to Finland, he didn't talk about Italian politics. He talked about the platform and the people that we talked about. We didn't talk about with any politicians. We talked about the company who has built the, built the platform. We didn't talk with politicians. Did you learn a lot from them? Yes, we learn about uh, we learn a lot about their platform and how they do the systems with the voting and things like that. That that, that that's what we learned a lot, and uh, I'm really grateful about that. Uh, Casaleggio, who is 
who is in the Five Star Movement. He has a company who does the platforms and things like that, and that's the guy that we have been meeting. How has the voting gone for Likunut for Movement Now? Uh, we don't at this time when when it's the when it's uh, this COVID thing. We don't have many things that we vote about in the parliament. So I think the COVID things are not things that you vote about, but. Uh, but in the future, we will, of course, vote about things when it comes to the EU package or whatever it comes, we will vote about it. Oh, so on the EU stimulus, you're going to hold a member's vote? Yes. Okay. That's uh, certainly innovative and interesting. Um, yeah, it, it will be interesting to see how that turns out. Um, I have a question about your, your target for the local elections. Um, what are you What are you aiming to achieve? How many councillors do you want? I think we can get between five and ten percent in Helsinki. Yes. Okay, that's that's a that's a big number, and that would be like what five, six. Yeah. Numbers? Yeah, we have a good chance. We have about we have about fifty fifty people that are running, and uh, we have good people that are running, and and five uh, percent is 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 about fifteen thousand votes. So I don't think it's. It's so difficult to get 15,000 votes. And that was us speaking with Harry Harkimo of the One Man Party Movement Now. Now, there's been a lot of COVID-related news this week, so I guess that's where we should start this week's news roundup. Parliament's Constitutional Law Committee on Wednesday said that a proposal to introduce strict lockdown laws was unconstitutional. The committee said parts of the package could be implemented through other legislation and parts of the law were poorly drafted. Later on, ministers agreed that Finland would not concentrate COVID vaccine distribution on the worst hit regions, at least until risk groups had been vaccinated nationwide. That means extra vaccines won't be sent to Helsinki and Turku until mid-May at the earliest. THL head Marku Turvahauta said the debate over regional priority had been politicised. Regional authorities in southern Finland said they would close indoor gyms and sports facilities for a two-week period to try and slow an increase in COVID infection rates. Finland's Auditor General Tutti Uluvikari was threatened with suspension after her expenses came under the spotlight. She spent thousands of euros of taxpayers' cash on beauty services and travel. The case has raised questions on who oversees Finland's overseers, prompting an investigation by a parliamentary commission. Stora Enso announced it would stop pulp production for viscose used in Xinjiang, China. The company had been criticized after media reports about forced labor around viscose production. Stura Enzo did not confirm that ethical concerns had played a role in its decision. Ulla reported on wealthy Finns avoiding taxes by shifting their assets to Luxembourg. Financier Björn Walrus was one figure mentioned in the report, which also revealed that he has invested in payday loan firms. Passenger train services between Finland and Sweden moved a step closer as a station in the Swedish border town of Haparanda opened once more to passenger trains. Local leaders want more services linking to the Finnish network and a border bridge to be upgraded. Ulla's latest party support poll indicates a reshuffling in the ranking of Finland's biggest political parties. The Social Democrats, led by Prime Minister Sanna Marin, dropped from first to third place, falling behind the main opposition blocs, the Finns party and the National Coalition party. Elections are due on June the 13th. You can join the conversation too. Let us know what you think on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can also leave a voice note or text on WhatsApp. Our number is plus 358 Four 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 two one zero nine zero nine. The long Easter weekend's almost here, Egan. Now you've already told us you've perfected your Finnish Easter desserts. So what have you got planned now? I wouldn't say I've perfected. I'd say I, I have tried them and decided that I want to spend my time doing something else. 
um, <laughs> rather than creating or eating these 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 things. Um, but also this weekend I'm working, so uh, my Easter egg hunting will be done remotely on Sunday. What about you? Well, I guess I'll be going on a socially distanced Easter egg hunt. That sounds exciting. Egg sighting. Do you get it? Do you... Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry about that. But next week, the Prime Minister Sanna Marin will be joining the show to round off our series of party leader interviews. So don't miss it. And I guess now all that's left is to thank you for joining us this week, our audience for listening and supporting the show, our producer Ronan Brown, and our sound engineer Basi Ilka. Don't forget to check out our website at wiley.fi slash news and leave us reviews wherever you get your podcasts. Bye. Bye. 